All right, the, the stuff we're going to learn in this class, this is actually going to be one of the cooler things that we do. Um, I want to start with this graph. So right here, I've got this function, f of x. And then what I've drawn is a line that intersects f of x at, at two different points. And so we could label these points. This would be uh, point 1 right here. And so each of those points has a corresponding x value and y value that are labeled on here. Well, this x and y, they correspond, of course, to actual values on the x-axis and the y-axis. So right here, at this point, would be x1. And the value at this point here is going to be x2. Same idea on the y-axis. I've got point y1 over here. And this point y2. So, we've talked about slope many times throughout your math careers. You've got this distance on here that we're calling the change in x, which is x2 minus x1. And then going this direction, I've got the change in y, which is y2 minus y1. So, if I wanted to find the slope of this line, we know that the slope is delta y over delta x, change in y over change in x. If we plug in the formula that we just wrote, that's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. All very algebra 1 at this point, right? So what we want to do, and my pen is in all places. What we want to do is change this a little bit. All right? I want to look at what's going to happen if I change which, which of these points I'm using, you can see I've got, I've got different values um, already marked on this graph. So if I take this line and I leave point 1 where it is, but I change this slope to here, well, what I've essentially just done is move x2 over, right? So this point is going to shift. It's now going to be here. It just shifted over this much. Right? And so my delta x just got a little bit smaller as my line shifted you know, to the next point down on the, on the graph of f of x. The same thing would happen again if I shifted it further. If I shifted it to here, now my x2 just moved even closer. Right, So delta x now just got smaller. I can shift it even more. And I can come to this point here. Well now, x2, it just moved way in here. We're all the way in tight, right? And so now I've got a real small delta x in between there. Well, ultimately what we want to do is bring it all the way to tangent. I want this line to be a tangent, which means it's only going to touch the graph in one place. So a tangent line like this, if you look at where x2 is, and we follow this pattern as x2 got closer and closer and closer, x2 is actually now right on top of x1. So x1 is x2 in this graph. Now, if we take a look at the effect that has here, this gives us our y2 minus y1. Of course, now that we're at the same point, it's going to be 0. But more importantly, I've got a 0 down here. Because if x2 is equal to x1, that gives me an undefined slope. Well, in algebra, that was an issue. We were done right there. Like, oh, you know, we can't deal with this. But now we're in calculus, and we have this idea of a limit that we've been working on. And so really what I can do is I can say, well, yes, it's true that at this moment I don't really know what's going on. But I can observe a pattern as I bring x2 closer and closer and closer to x1. And so essentially what I want to do here is I want to take the limit as x2 becomes x1 of this slope, which we just said was y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, I'm also allowed to refer to these y's differently, right? We can have two variables, x and y. But remember that this value here, this is also f of x1. And this value here is f of x2. 
could rewrite this formula a little bit to be f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1. Still taking this, this idea of the limit here, right? So if I really wanted to figure this out, I want to write it all together, I've got the limit as x2 approaches x1 of f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1. So hopefully that lets you see that what we're doing here is we're working with a slope, just the slope of this red line right here. But we want the slope at a specific point where x1 is equal to x2. Since we can't actually plug that value in, we're, we're using a limit to determine what the value is. Now, I'm going to take a very similar looking drawing, but I want to use a little different um, notation for this. So, instead of calling this x1, y1, which it was on the last sheet, x1 and y1, now we're calling it x and f of x, right? So I have my value here, this one's x, this one's f of x. Over here, this point we're saying is x plus delta x, where this is delta x, whatever this change is here. Well, if we're going to go with that notation, then the value up here would be f of x plus delta x. Because it's the, it's the value on the function that corresponds with this point here on the, on the x-axis. So now I want to go back to my exact same idea that I was writing out here, but in this different notation. So if I look just at the slope of this line first, it would be y2 minus y1. So this minus this, and I would have f of x plus delta x minus f of x. And this would be divided by x2 minus x1. x plus delta x minus x. Well, I'm sure you guys can see that these x's are going to cancel out, right? That I have x minus x is 0. So I can rewrite this slope as f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. But same thing we were talking about before. What I want to do is bring x2 and x1 closer and closer together. Except that we're not calling them x2 and x1 in this one. We're calling them delta x. So what I want to have happen is I want this delta x to be nothing, right? I want to bring these so close together that there is no change in x. And so I'm going to take this exact same expression and I'm going to evaluate the limit as delta x becomes 0 of f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x. And this is what we call the limit definition of a derivative. And we'll be using this to solve problems uh, for the time being. But this is the idea of what a, a derivative is. And the most important thing about this is that what we're looking at here, this, this entire concept of a derivative, this is slope. Right? This whole thing came from the change in y over the change in x. It is a slope. And so these derivatives, we're going to come up with so many rules and so many different problems we can use to evaluate this. But the whole time, every single one of these is going to be a slope once you finally get the answers. Um, here's just another look at the, at the, the formula. I will show you that um, some books use uh, h instead of delta x, make it look a little less intimidating. So if you want, you can write it. You can say um, f prime of x 
is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Uh, this is actually the way that our book does this, the book that we're using this year. They use an h in there. There's a lot of problems with h. But, um, you know, there's no difference between these two things. H means exactly the same thing that delta X does. This one looks a little less intimidating for some reason than this one does. I guess just because of the Greek in there. If you wanted it even less intimidating, it's okay with me if you want to, uh, you know, do something like this. Acceptable. So if you're going to use the happy face, just remember that what we're saying here is if you take a look at this graph, the distance between here and here is happy face. I actually have a class coming in right now, so I'm going to stop this for a little while. We'll get to an example next. 